Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Today we have um, Dr. Arjun Pai, Dr. Sandeep Kanholi, and Dr. Ditya Togi with us. And we're going to do a transit video for all the centers for 2022. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Nav, for uh, you know having all of us together here. Um, I think Aditya, he has all the transit dates that are coming up. So probably Aditya, if you want to take over and share your screen and you can let us know what is in store for us in the skies. Okay. Okay, fine. So yeah, great. I think um, the first video for this year, correct? Uh, for the Jan. But the thing is to say that who, who says first January is the first day? It's everything is circular, correct? So uh anyway so after a long time uh, happy new year to everyone and we have begun 2022 2020 was a crazy 2021 was another crazy year and now 2022 triple two two plus zero plus two plus two that makes six so maybe some interesting you know some symmetries i'm just waiting for second february 2022 two 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 two, two. so let's see interesting date or even 20th february yeah well there are some there was a meme thing going on like it's 2022 you know like you know, ah, we're yeah. going through a yeah. repetition of 2020 again this year right so 2022 but <laughs> yeah. that's not the case so yeah we'll see second february and 20th february and 22nd february i think these are all interesting dates yeah yeah, never interesting. interesting yeah. I just thought some, and and, uh, and then never noticed that uh, just two minutes back to uh, I mean, we're just talking. Right. And realized. Anyway, uh, interesting year. Uh, hello everyone, and thanks, uh, Dr. Pai, again for inviting me to your channel. And let's start with. I have a small presentation here. It's, it's not a presentation actually, but only listing all the. Uh, dates of uh, transits. So first we focus on the main planets or the main long, long-term planets. So that is Jupiter, Saturn, and the nodal axis planets, Rahu and Ketu. And Jupiter, starting with Jupiter, like right from the beginning of the year, January to April 13th, uh, Jupiter is going to be in Aquarius. And after 13th April, April thereafter, uh, that means this is, I should have written it, 13th April and thereafter, Jupiter is going to move into Pisces. And it will stay in Pisces for throughout the year till the end, till December 31st. But in the meantime, we know all outer planets do go a period of uh, retrograde, depending upon their position of the sun, when they're opposite to the sun, all outer planets do go retrograde. And similarly, Jupiter will go retrograde on from July 28th to November 24th. And remember, from April, it is in Pisces. So Jupiter is going to be in Pisces when it is doing retrograde. Okay. So all this term, time when from July 20 to November 24th, it is going retrograde, but it is not coming to accurate. It is still staying in Pisces. So I think Jupiter is going after April 13th, it will go in Pisces and it will do its retrogression. It will do it direct motion, everything in Pisces in its own home. Jupiter is, I feel it's relaxed, feeling very nice, feeling very comfortable in its own home of Pisces. So special year for Jupiter, maybe. OK. So what are the important dates to know? January to April 13th, it is in uh, Aquarius. Maybe I should go to slideshow. And from after April, uh, it is going to be in Pisces for throughout the uh, year, for rest of the year. And the retrograde period for Jupiter is July 28th to November 24th. I hope my voice is clear, is it? No issues? Yes, very clear. Yes. You're fine. Very yeah. Clear. Okay. Yeah. Then comes our another hero, which is Saturn. Saturn, January to April, it is going to be in Aquarius. Again, this fellow is in its own home. I think people are all wants to be in its home. I think they are also law under locked, you know, because of coronavirus, maybe. We are also locked. Planets are also locked in their own homes. So the same. As above, so below, correct? Dr. Pai, your 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 statement. We are also locked in home. Planet. It's also Saturn is in Aquarius, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces. So everyone is in their home, relaxing. But from April 29th 
your saturn is going to be in uh, pisces so after 29 saturn is moves to pisces and then from june 4th to october 23rd the, the, there is a period of uh, retrogression for uh, saturn and remember it is it has gone into pisces and then it does retrograde so that means by july 12th again it comes back to capricorn okay so it will come back to capricorn uh, stay in capricorn for the entire time till october uh, 23rd and, and i guess it is staying in uh, capricorn till year end maybe only moving to a aquarius again in month of uh, january next year so we don't yeah one, one typo here aditya i think jan to april it's in capricorn actually i think uh, oh yeah this yeah. is a typo here i need so to you can correct, correct it right now so jan yeah, to april it's in capricorn, capricorn then april 29 is going to uh, aquarius kind of thing going on yeah correct yeah april 29 it is then this will be again in uh, aquarius aquarius correct. yeah aquarius yeah. so simple typo thing yeah. and then july 12th again capricorn yes sorry for that um yes but again you can see saturn is also in its home either a capricorn or aquarius again he is also locked i think he is also fearing corona virus maybe who knows then comes our two great friends rahu ketu i feel sometimes today i really felt that rahu ketu is our good friend because it doesn't do retrogression doesn't become direct of course there is a period it becomes direct that's a different topic but if you take mean rahu ketu always it is uh, uh, going opposite always it's a retrograde motion um see rahu ketu is right now right now rahu ketu rahu is in taurus and ketu is in scorpio and rahu ketu on 12th april 2022 uh rahu will move into aries um and similarly ketu is going to move in uh, libra okay and for the rest of the year i think rahu will be in aries ketu will be in libra no these are the note that these are the mean positions of rahu and ketu if you take um, uh, uh what is that real uh nodes or real position not real what it is called uh, mean and uh, true node true notes true 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 notes there can be slightly few days difference maybe a week difference something like that but here we are discussing about the mean uh, rahu and ketu position so remember rahu, by mid april rahu and ketu is also changing its position when you talk about rahu ketu the immediately the next thing comes is uh, eclipses now eclipses as we know comes in a group pair uh so right now we have as and you may also be knowing in every year there is two eclipse seasons when sun is near rahu and when the sun is near ketu you will either get depending upon moon's position you may get solar and lunar eclipses and let's see what are the dates for eclipse in the year for the year 2022 30th april 2022 is partial solar eclipse um and then may 16 2022 we have a total lunar eclipse october 25th again a partial solar eclipse and the november 8 2022 again a total lunar eclipse so you see these are the pairs this is where uh, sun is going to be near rahu this position the sun is going to be near ketu and then they basically when it's a new moon and full moon you are going to get the eclipses Now, where the eclipses are going to happen? So let's start with 30th April 2022. This is taken from timeanddate.com. Uh, you can see for 30th, this is a solar eclipse. Remember, um, and you can see that parts of Southern America, Chile, I think Argentina, maybe something like that. Those regions, only the southern part here, we are going to see the eclipse. The rest of the world is not going to see the eclipse. Maybe a part of Antarctica may also see the eclipse. So most of the part. of the world won't witness an eclipse uh, of this solar eclipse then comes 16th may 2022 which is a lunar eclipse so lunar eclipse um, you can see the uh, the eastern part of north america um, and the whole south america as well as uh, antarctica is going to witness a complete eclipse um, but the western part of canada as well as the western part of us may only see a i think it may only see a, a partial eclipse 
okay but it's mostly concentrated in the western part of the world that's where the eclipse is going to happen so basically north america and south america canada region and all so that's where lunar eclipse is going to take place on 16th may 2022 then for the next cycle when the sun is near ketu's position again a lunar a solar eclipse is going to happen on 25th october 2022 I guess twenty fifth October. I think it's a Diwali day. It should be a Diwali day, correct? It should be a Diwali day. I guess. Yes, it's a Diwali day because last time Diwali was in November second or third. So it has to be Diwali. So this is going to be a Diwali eclipse, and that reminds me, we had an eclipse in Diwali uh, in India. I remember it was twenty fourth October nineteen ninety five. that was a solar eclipse on a diwali day and now also on 25th october 2022 we are going to again get a solar so this, eclipse this year diwali is on 24th october actually 24th yeah, october the day after diwali the day it plus minus one day yes and here you can see a solar eclipse complete total solar eclipse um, um is it total or is it partial partial solar eclipse i think all the solar eclipses are partial so there's a partial solar eclipse is uh, going to happen uh, maybe because this darker portion shows the umbra and the lighter portion shows the penumbra but uh, you could see that the northern part of india especially kashmir and punjab and uh, some parts of rajasthan and uttarakhand they are going to see this partial solar eclipse and the umbra part will fall on that okay and the rest of the india so india is going to have witness this eclipse uh, probably in the year 25th october 2022 the solar eclipse but i think americans and canada and canadians need not worry about that neither maybe the eastern part of the world then comes 8th november uh, 2022 where we have a lunar eclipse um <laughs> it's interesting because why i was saying it's interesting is if you see this map uh, it's exactly here that the entire eclipse is going to be visible and when you see this here in this picture it is part of this is going to witness the complete uh, lunar eclipse so it's basically the other part uh, mostly in pacific ocean and the western part of america and canada is going to see the complete lunar eclipse for the entire night uh, and is covering the most parts so this is again a lunar eclipse and from 8th november several regions maybe even india is going to witness a partial lunar eclipse um as well as the eastern part of us too so it's covering the most part or i think the only region spared here is uh, europe you know, some parts of parts of europe are spared other than that few countries in middle east and russia definitely and 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 us and south america and india and china and australia definitely are all going to witness this eclipse either partial or either uh, either complete total lunar eclipse So remember these. So these are the transit dates. Uh, remember. So basically, to what is a summary is Jupiter is being in uh, Pisces after April, and it will remain in Pisces. Saturn is going to uh, dance Capricorn and Aquarius. Rahu Ketu going in uh, after mid April, going into uh, Rahu is into Aries, Ketu is into uh, Libra, and then around month of May, you are going to get uh, lunar and solar eclipse. and uh, uh, in the month of november you are going to get uh, again a lunar and solar eclipse so these are uh, maybe october november again april may and october november you have solar and lunar eclipse occurring so that's the whole scenario for the 2022 other than all number 2s happening in the month of february so watch out for second february nothing is going to happen like second february everything nothing no no doomsday or something but just being a number guy i always feel uh, amazed by 2nd february 2022 20th february 2022 22nd february 2022 so interesting dates for this year and i guess we will have only after something like that maybe after 11 years maybe 3rd march 30th march uh, 2033 but again that is 20 so it's not going to be that good but so enjoy february month 
you see, I remember we used to get, you know, something like in Subway, they used to give us some discount for that in the month of February. I remember as a college, when I was at the university, February, they will say, and some discount they used to give. I don't know whether they still have in Subway or not. Uh, some 50 cents or 60 cents off. So we used to be happy with that. So, so I think this year they should definitely do because it's such an interesting February. Well, okay, so that's all I have for maybe uh, when uh, Sandeep will discuss about transits and all in different houses, I will jump in and then try to try to put some few words of mine. I'll talk some general things right now, uh, and then Dr. Pyle also add in. So, well, for a couple of things I can add quickly is that finally Jupiter is about to enter into Pisces. It's a positive thing to look forward to. So that is something good, actually. Jupiter is finally entering a moksha sign of Pisces and is going to retrograde in Uttarabhadra Palanakshatra, which is all, all good. So that is actually something really positive thing to look for. In fact, Jupiter will also, on the day when it's transiting uh, into Pisces, it will be exalted in Cancer also in Navamsha. So that's a very positive thing, a lot of good things and so forth. So I think uh, this past year there was a lot of travel restrictions. I think now WHO is also saying travel restrictions is going away. So a lot of the summer will be very active with regard to family kind of matters for sure. That I can say without doubt. That's quite so, good actually. So, so Jupiter yeah. in Pisces is like Jupiter is going in 12th house of so foreign travels, you know. Foreign travels, a lot of expansion travel. of foreren travels. <laughs> you can, exactly. you can so a lot of that. Uh, spirituality, excellent time period for spirituality also. Um, it's a lot of ashrams, a lot of retreats, all that, you know. In fact, someone is actually talking about retreat kind of thing. So that kind of thing I can say. Also, excellent time period for spiritual studies also. Excellent time period for like uh, any kind of uh, spirituality in general. Um, now, uh, the uh, the other interesting transit uh, I can just uh, briefly comment upon is Saturn's transit actually. Now, if you carefully look at Saturn's transit, the nakshatra over is going to have most of action as far as Saturn is concerned, is Danishta Nakshatra. So that is a very important thing. So Danishta is really kind of real estate, actually. And Saturn can um, make, build long-term real estate kind of investors right now. So, you know, a lot of people will be really big time looking into real estate. They'll be investing into real estate. But then at the same time, the established real estate people will also have some problems also. So it's like a defense kind of energy will play out. Because Saturn can also represent karma with regard to real estate. So... That can be a tough uh, thing in my opinion. But of course, uh, right now, Saturn is also about to, more importantly, Saturn will be hitting the, um, uh, exact, uh, the from a Pai Padri perspective, the exaltation point of Mars is becoming very important. And that I will just say generally. So on 22nd January or so, well, 4th April, sorry. 4th April, um, it's going to be transiting exactly over 28 degrees of uh, Capricorn where Mars is getting exalted. So around that time period. So that time period, you know, that can be some around that week, actually. So April now April is a very busy month anyways. So April is a very busy month, a lot of action happening. So part of that is also going to be some uh, kind of challenges which we also have, which we have to face with. We have to face the, uh, you know, we have to be um, stricter about ourselves and establish health routines. And you see the problem with Danishtha and Nakshatra is it's also connected with the heart, actually. So there's a good time period to start establishing routines to help out with your heart health and all that. So that is a, going to be a big theme, actually. That's something I can really encourage. And Jupiter in 12,000 Pisces is best time period to get all this health checkup kind of thing. I can really encourage that. Now, a lot of people have been depressed this past particular, uh, you know, couple of months. Mental health is a real thing. Now, this is the time period to fix all that. You know, that I can really encourage. Meditation, walking, working out every day, that kind of thing. I can really encourage that. That's an excellent time period to get into all these health routines because Saturn is going to, go, literally going over Mars exaltation point. So it will really, really show you the problems you have and you'll have to really work them out also. So that's one big thing I want to highlight also. And then, of course, Rahu will be in Kritika. And uh, right now, Rahu is in Kritika. We are all feeling it. So in fact, you know, a lot of people are feeling there. Uh, we are talking about financial kind of thing, which was happening. Definitely, that is one thing. Everyone is feeling one way or the other. But then Rahu will also enter into Barni Nakshatra. Now, that's when a lot of creativity and isolation can come. Now, in my opinion, that is also one more point where we have to be cautious uh, because around uh, perhaps uh, Rahu won't be transiting over Barni Nakshatra soon but before that Rahu will actually transit over the exaltation point of moon which is three degrees of uh, uh, Taurus around uh, 15th of February actually so that particular date is very important because that's when people will be you know just <laughs> wild 
so just make sure you're not driving your imaginations crazy just keep it a simple uh, excellent time period to worship any kind of uh, devi kind of thing devi or shiva kind of thing excellent time period for that now in my opinion yogis are waiting for time periods like that you know so they are waiting for like okay when can i do some sadhana and all that if you do anything on those particular days you will see big results happening because moon is exalted at that degree and then uh, rahu will also transit over barni nakshatra when barni nakshatra is a nakshatra but saturn is debilitated so there will be some um, uh, some kind of semi depressive kind of state that could play out you know it's very important to be aware actually barni has this tendency that it isolates you and then out of the isolation something new is born so that's something we'll all go through in our own ways actually and that's a very important uh, important phase also uh, but again that is a that particular time period a lot of creativity can come through deeper introspection now uh, something new can actually come out uh, through during that time period also and the lords be very very important um so those are some simple pointers i want to share uh, just based on the nakshatra element of the transits so that's some simple thing so in a uh, in a in a short uh, thing probably one can say this april of this year is going to be yeah. very interesting because of rahu ketu moving eclipses yeah. happening jupiter yeah. going yeah uh, saturn so, moving in the end also yeah so that's uh, i think watch out for april yeah so april try to uh, try to make making because the planetary influences are changing make sure april is a controlled month in general don't make a big change during april a good chance change change is coming but you'll find too many changes to handle at that time so that's one thing just in the, in april month just take it easy kind of thing is what would encourage for sure definitely april for sure a big month and then of course the eclipse one the eclipse one you should anyway be cautious that's uh, anything i would encourage Usually, the eclipse one, the people are feeling the pressure subconsciously, so you have to be you have to be more prepared for that. Actually, um, that's what I would add. Uh, the uh, one thing I would I would also want to add here is that when Rahu is in Barni Pada four, it is going to the Ash. It will in the Navamsha. It is going to an Ashtamamsha Pada. So that is also not an easy time period. So there can be some panic, some fear during that Pada. so just uh, take it easy uh, make sure you are addressing the problems in a uh, in a logical way rather than from a place of fear that's very important because rahu is in going to that particular path that's also one more thing i just want to highlight so that's uh, um, so after april is when you should just be more uh, after the eclipse basically in the month of june also that's when the path of four kind of barni transit will be happening so that's uh, that's when a couple of planets will be retrograde also so you'll have to watch out for uh, during that time period so just be more aware when that particular path of transit is happening and uh, not to make any sudden decisions impulsive decisions and all that now barney is a sign of sexuality and all that so definitely don't <laughs> don't go into sexual affairs and all that hardcore i cannot say the number of constellation i had last year with ketu and scorpio with sexual affairs and all that or everyone i had to tell them you know what are you doing with your life kind of thing going on you know so it will that's a big thing again rahu is in barni so definitely watch out for that uh, it's a big thing especially this pada for the more challenging pada in terms of uh, that actually so that's one thing i would like to add uh, the one more thing i would add is that um, you know when it um, good thing is that because jupiter is in strong we'll have the intelligence to navigate whatever problems you are facing so that is excellent actually so jupiter is uh, not influencing but there is a problem when jupiter is in pisces and when rahu moves into aries there is a malefic hemming happening with regard to jupiter so saturn and rahu are on either side so jupiter and saturn also move moves into aquarius so that's a temporary problem which you have to be mindful of also uh, when saturn moves into capricorn uh, and jupiter moves saturn moves from capricorn to aquarius jupiter moves from aquarius to pisces and rahu is also there in aries so then jupiter is also feeling stuck so that you just need to be aware of that particular transit effect also so of course jupiter is strong but make sure you are not allowing your own fears and depression to you know not implement implement your intelligence that's one very important thing usually i would encourage that charity is a very excellent act to strengthen your jupiter be generous with your time help others inspire others things like that it's an excellent thing work on spiritual practices then suddenly this malefic hemming is an opportunity to cleanse your karma that i cannot say that enough so that's one important thing also but yeah so this is what i have so quickly this is some simple point that i wanted to share now up to you dr pai um thanks uh, aditya and uh, sandeep some very excellent points <clears throat> i would also like to uh, add a couple of pointers here 
um, related to these transits which are coming up. Firstly, uh, Rahu is going through Kritika at the moment. And in my study that, that I have seen an observation is you have to know that Kritika and Bharani that it is going to transit next, both are, you know, called as Adhumukha nakshatras, which means they are facing downwards. And Rahu is a kind of planet who likes to look, you know, upwards and out outwards and more towards the the space. So there is a, a contrast of energy that is already there. Secondly, in Sarvatobhadra Chakra, you see that Bharani and Kritika are also interlinked because there is a, you know, a forward kick from or a forward looking aspect or Veda from Kritika on Bharani. So people who have prominent planets in Bharani will already feel the heat of this transit that is happening of Rahu in Kritika. Similarly, Rahu's transit in Kritika will also have a bearing on any buddy who has prominent or focal planets in Shravana Nakshatra. Because that is how these Vedas work. Veda means some sort of obstacle that is going to come. Another important point that I want to make, which Santip already has uh, mentioned about, the fourth Pada of Bharani. When Rahu is going to transit this fourth Pada of Bharani, it goes into its Ashtamamsha Pada. That means it goes into Scorpio Navamsha. Now I've told you, it is a very contrasting energy of looking at Bharani Nakshatra and Kritika Nakshatra, both are facing downwards. And Bharani is called as a Ugra Nakshatra. It's very fierce. Rahu brings in a lot of confusion there because Rahu is a Chandala and it can bring out a lot of scandals because Rahu moves into Scorpio, something which is secrecy. And I believe that a lot of things that we have not known in the last two years are going to come up, which means this pandemic. Today, we see a lot of countries are calling it as a flu. You have to take it as a flu now, and you have to start learning to live with this um, virus. So a lot of these things will come up to the surface of what is happening because Bharani, as I said, is a Ugra Nakshatra and Rahu's energy when it comes to the fourth Pada is already going to feel the heat. Another part that I would also want to say, Kritika also has a Veda on Vishaka Nakshatra in Sarvato Bhadra Chakra. Both of them are Mishra Nakshatras. Now, what is going to happen now is when Rahu is going to move into Kritika Nakshatra second Pada, that is where the moon gets into its exaltation point, a deep exaltation. However, Ketu will be slowly moving towards the point where moon goes into its deep debilitation. That means there is going to be a lot of people who would feel that they need some support, especially I would say in terms of mental, you know, um, people feeling, you know, depressive or needing support, you know, going to a psychologist or a psychotherapist, very disturbed mind, very flexible. And you would see a lot of um, activities happening there. Vishaka, also remember when when ketu goes into the second pada of vishaka again second pada of vishaka is also called as a ashtamamsha pada which means any planet which falls there will go into taurus okay 
So that K2 going into torus will make it feel that it is debilitated because K2 in torus can feel debilitated. So there is a lot of energies that are going to play around in Vishaka, starting from the fourth pada as it goes into the second pada. But the saving grace is second pada of Vishaka is also called as a Pushkara Navamsha pada. Even though it's one which is called as Ashtamamsha, it is also Pushkara Navamsha pada. Okay. Another point that I wanted to make, if you look, what is happening now is Rahu and Ketu are transiting in the natural second house of Taurus and Ketu is in the natural eighth house of Scorpio. So Rahu is transiting in the Artha Rashi and Ketu is in the Moksha Rashi. That's where they are very comfortable. But after this April, what is going to happen is Rahu is going to go into Aries and that is your Dharmapada. Rahu is a planet who doesn't like to follow any Dharma. He is one of the most adharmic planets. He says, you follow me, you follow my rules. I set the rules. I don't believe in the rules that you are setting for me. So you would find a lot of rebellion is what is going to come up when Rahu is going to transit into the Dharma Rashi because they are a fire sign and Rahu is a very Vata planet. So he's really going to ignite a lot of fire and that's why you would probably see a lot of uprising or a lot of intolerance when it comes to religion or faith, your belief systems, there would be a lot of intolerance and there might be a lot of clashes that might happen world over because of Rahu's transit there. And Ketu, and if you see Saturn also going into the 11th Rashi, which is Aquarius, Ketu also being there in the seventh, these are called as Kama Trikonas. Three, seven, 11 are called as Kama Trikonas. When you see that these planets are going to go into the Saturn in a Kama Trikona, natural Kama Trikona, and also a natural Badakasthan. Aquarius is a natural Badakasthan for Aries ascendants. Aries is the Kala Purush Kundli. So it can give a lot of trouble to large organizations. Because 11th house, Saturn is going to go, but also Ketu is going into another karma. So a lot of relationships, friendships, because Ketu is in 7th house, natural 7th house, which is the Mula Trikona, the head office of Venus, Libra. And Saturn in his Mula Trikona of Aquarius. So you would see a lot of break in friendships, relationships will be challenged. And one more thing, very important, I want to mention with the transit of Saturn and Jupiter. Now, Saturn and Jupiter are both going to go through the 11th house of Aquarius and Pisces during this year. So these last four and a half nakshatras that you see, which is the third pada of Dhanishta, fourth pada of Dhanishta, the whole of Satabishak, Purva Bhadrapada, Uttara Bhadrapada, and Revati. These are called as Panchaka nakshatras. They are associated with Akasha Tattva, which means ether. Jupiter naturally feels very good when it comes into the 11th and the 12th signs. So I would say Jupiter, even though he will feel good, but when Jupiter comes into Puro Bhadrapada, Puro Bhadrapada is a Adho Mukha Nakshatra. If you see all the nakshatras that Saturn and Jupiter are going to transit, whether it is Dhanishta, Shatabishak, Uttara Bhadrapada, 
all these three nakshatras are urdhva mukha which means they are facing upwards saturn whenever it comes into tamasik nakshatras he feels comfortable so in meena nadi the nakshatras which are ruled which are associated in vimshotri with mars saturn rahu ketu are called as tamasik nakshatras those nakshatras which are associated with jupiter and mercury in vimshotri are called as satvik nakshatras okay and those which are associated with sun moon and venus these nakshatras are said to be rajasik now not to confuse them with the parashari principles of the planets and their uh gunas they their gunas exactly these are gunas of the nakshatras so the guna of the nakshatras are different here it is not based on the planet because in parashari venus and mercury would be rajas but here mercury's nakshatras and jupiter's nakshatras are called satvik now why i'm bringing this point is always observe when a tamasik planet is going through a tamasik nakshatra you would find that it is very much in sync with the guna so it will give generally the thumb rule is they give you better results but when a tamasik or a rajasik planet is going over a satvik nakshatra which is a satvik nakshatras here in this year we have two satvik nakshatras they will be transiting through one is purva bhadrapada and other is revati so jupiter will feel jupiter's transit will be very favorable exception is when jupiter is going to go over uttara bhadrapada so when jupiter is going through purva bhadrapada and revati i would say there would be a lot of pilgrimages foreign travels people wanting to go to foreign lands might increase people wanting to go to a monastery a shrine or an ashram and staying there these are things that i would observe during this transits so please observe the nakshatra gunas are important nakshatras you know because in transits when you are doing muhurta when you are checking you also look at the direction so upward urdhva mukha nakshatras are supposed to be rather better when planets are transiting through them so here in this transit puru bhadrapada is the downward looking so when if saturn is transiting there he will create little bit of trouble okay so these are some of my take on these nakshatras i'm sure you are going to go uh, deep into discussing each of the lagnas and how these transits are going to operate and unfortunately i will not be able to stay longer i have a early start tomorrow so probably i'll have to you know drop off at some point when i feel uh, drowsy so i would let you continue but these are some of the pointers do look at uh, sarvato bhadra chakra because there would be a vedha uh, in in terms of the transits also what i want to point out one more concept that people do not discuss today in our transit video we have brought in new concepts of talking about looking at transits with uh, the direction we have also looked at transits with the sarvato bhadra chakra how each nakshatra can impact then we looked at the gunas of the nakshatras and how the transits can be in sync which means any tamasik graha when it is going through a tamasik nakshatra it is favorable a rajasik graha going into a rajasik nakshatra they are favorable and a satvik going into satvik will be favorable but the transit of a satvik 
over a tamasic or a rajasic over a tamasic will be completely not so favorable. Then the final thing that I want to leave this discussion for is looking at the nadi or the three dosha of the nakshatras. Not many people focus on the three doshas because many a times we see health related problems that can come because there is an imbalance in the three doshas. The three doshas usually what we say is vata, pitta and kapha. Now kapha can also be called as you know shleshma. Or if you're looking at the nadi concept, it is adi nadi, madhya nadi and antya nadi. Now when we see the nakshatra concept, there is a thumb rule I always used. Thumb rule is all Mercury, sorry, all Venus, all Mars, and all Saturn uh, nakshatras are said to be Pitta. Pitta means there is a lot of fire component in you. Vata is there is a principle of movement that happens. And Kapha is more where you tendency to gain weight is larger. So we have to know that we have two consecutive nakshatras which are going to be a lot of a Kapha element. So Satabhishak and Puro Bhadrapada are said to be you know, the principle behind is Kapha. Jupiter's transit through these nakshatras can give you weight gain related problems. Health related problems because of weight gain might also be there. So be careful and have a good exercise regime because Jupiter has a tendency to put on weight. And because it can lead to a lot of ailments as Santip has already mentioned when you know, Dhanishta nakshatra, it is operating, any planets moving there, it can give you heart related palpitations, especially when Saturn is going to move through Dhanishta nakshatra. Even now, as we speak, uh, is Saturn now in Shravana nakshatra, I guess. And Rahu is in Kritika nakshatra. Both of these nakshatras have Veda on each other. There could be a lot of gastrointestinal problems that people can face. Bloating of the stomach, indigestion, you know, acid reflux, uh, constipation, indigestion, you know, heartburn. That could all be because both Rahu and Saturn are both a lot of Vayu uh, or Vata element is very high. So I think with these transits, a lot of people would need to get help from either, you know, herbal based, plant based medicines like Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy. Okay, so those sort of medications might be more useful. And there might be a lot of detox that people need to do because I said Rahu is going to transit over these Panchaka nakshatras, especially Purva Bhadrapada. People would need to go through some liver detoxification, some cleansing work that might be required that they might have to do that will ensure that there is good health. So these are some of the pointers that I wanted to leave you with. So, um, and I hope, you know, these transits are going to be, uh, you know, people can understand them better, better when Sandeep and uh, Aditya and Navji will be able to take them through each of the ascendants. So I rest my case now and uh, you guys can carry on. So thanks for having me Nav. And uh, Santip and Aditya, it's always a pleasure to have you and discuss, uh, you know, any, any any topic, especially when it is related to Jyotish. I feel that I gain a lot by discussing with you. So thank you very much, all of you, uh, for thank you. inviting me 
onto my own channel. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been doing any videos. So thanks, Nav. Thanks, Aditya and Sandeep for, um, you know, inviting me. Yeah, thank oh, you. Okay, so you. over to you guys. No, yeah, thank you, Dr. Pai. No, great points. Actually, very interesting points. Again, uh, just to repeat some of the good points, like the direction of nakshatras and the planetary nakshatra, the planet, the direction associated with those planets. I think that would be very important. Uh, for sure. So Rahu being in Kritika Nakshatra and, uh, uh, you know, um, that and Rahu being Barni, which is an Adomoga Nakshatra, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then you have this particular um, energy, which is Rahu, up, upward looking planet, about to enter into that. So there is a natural tendency for this conflicting energy and more a depression kind of thing, to be frank, and again, on that front. But but Jupiter being in, as you currently mentioned, in Puravadrapad Nakshatra, will actually help out a lot. Uh, of course, there's a health thing which you have to watch out for, which is kapha, weight gain, and all that. Uh, that's also one thing. Uh, with all those are great points, actually. Uh, the Meenanadi thing which you mentioned is also very interesting. The Rajasik, uh, the, how the Jupiter and Mercury are class, classified as uh, Satvik Nakshatras and how the, uh, you know, uh, how so that and uh, the Rajasik, the Tamasik Nakshatras being Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Nakshatras. I think uh, Saturn is about to will be entering into Satavisha Nakshatra, which will be a problem whenever that comes. And it's already in a Tamasik Nakshatra or Danishta. It's a different set of problems. So those Saturn are Saturn will be in Chatabisha probably next year, I guess. Yeah, next year, yeah, that's right. Yeah, next year. It's in Danishta anyways this year. So that's a okay. big thing, anyways. So those are oh, uh, very interesting points. Yeah. I, that will be a boom too, I feel, for astronomy, because already this telescope has gone and probably results will be coming by by by, by next year. So Saturn in Shatabisha, Shatabisha is also stars, you know, night star. Yeah. So exactly that's where it's kicking in. I could see that. Yeah. I think that would be a good time for uh, astronomy, for yes. astrology, for uh, occult studies and everything because it's Varunadev. Varunadev, also yeah. associated. And I think there would be a lot of focus when uh, Saturn is going to be in Danishta. See, Danishta is also associated, as we all know, the the Rig Vedic deity that is associated with it, or rather the Vedic deity we say is uh, the Ashtavasus. Ashtavasus are also, if you see, these are also can be connected to the Ashtadikpalas, which are the eight directional gods. So there is a, going to be a lot of uh, effort on global warming, climate change, um, you know, and we can see a lot of focus on those areas, I would say. And I hope that, you know, travel is going to resume again and we can have proper, you know, uh, normal travel after April is what I am hoping. Yeah. Now, in fact, uh, with Danishta, I also can add that uh, Danishta is also come with wealth, actually. So the name itself is wealth. So because of which I'm sure this is a year for a lot of people are going to invest in all kinds of wealth instruments like crypto and all these NFTs, which happened when Rahu was in Taurus, that kind of thing is going to be a big thing. And a lot of people can make a lot of money this year. I mean, sure, we are isolation, <laughs> but, uh, but you can direct towards that. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was just thinking, um, you know, talking about this COVID virus and coronavirus and all those. It started in, of course, in December 2019. Yeah. And uh, December 2019, it started, of course. January, February, by March in US and all, it became really a big issue and then locked, not locked down, but several countries came up with lockdown and other procedures. And if you see that, that was exactly when that Ketu was entering Mula at that time. Yeah. So Mula, its own nakshatra, Ketu virus and all those. Then it went into Scorpio, again, Ketu's sign and remained in Scorpio for the next one and a half year. So entire period, Mula plus one and a half year for this K2, it's exactly when all we are all under coronavirus. Now it has become like coronavirus, less like a normal cold or something. Now K2 is after slowly going away from Scorpio and going into Libra. Probably that time, maybe we may have some variant, but now that fear is not like that, which we used, used to have during the year 2020, um, around that time. So K2 did its own job of 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 making fear and everything. Uh, karaka of Kita, Karaka of virus or whatever it is. So now probably I feel maybe, I don't know, I can be wrong, completely wrong too, but 
but it is exactly started if you see the date around 20th of uh, i don't know the exact date when it was founded but it was december 2019 ketu was exactly at 13 degree 20 minutes or something like that when the where the mula point starts exactly at that point around 13 14 degrees so right when the ketu entered mula its own nakshatra and its own exaltation sign if you take scorpio as the sign of exaltation for ketu i think i think this uh, corona virus was at its peak I think uh, one one point I want Doctor Pai's opinion because Ketu will be in Vishaka and uh, Vishaka is also like a law thing, right? So it's a lawyer thing. So so do you think there'll be like a lot of uh, legal action this particular year, like people who are having lawsuits or anything along those lines? What would be what would be your? I think uh, one very special thing that is happening with Ketu now. is ketu is going to go through the arc way if you see like we have always pairs remember all the pair the nakshatras which is the purva and the uttara nakshatras whether it is purva falguni uttara falguni so you know purva is is a, you know the the legs one is the hind legs one is the forward legs similarly you see purva bhadrapada uttara bhadrapada they are the funeral cot the front legs and the hind legs similarly you see purva shada and uttara shada they also have similar thing it's like a, a stage or you can say we call it machan machan is where you sit and you you know hunt animals so machan is like a square piece of thing that you put in between the tree where you sit there waiting for the you know like a man eater you tie a goat below and wait for the man eater to come so that is the kind of a place where you are waiting so that is called machan now this is the only other nakshatra where two nakshatras have the same symbology whether it is vishaka which is called as radha and anuradha which means what follows radha so vishaka and anuradha they also have similar which is both are you know one is uh, vishaka is an um, a triumphal arc way which is you know decorated with leaves and flowers and anuradha is the same thing we get it's like a so they are like a pad nakshatra actually so imagine ketu is like dhwaja or we call it shiki who is going to be kind of moving through these arc ways so i think he is going to assume so that's when i feel many of these people who are from mixed race ketu is a mixed race these are the people who would probably rise to power during this uh, you know transit also i feel there is going to be a lot of work that is going to happen because ketu is associated with uh, paranormal supernatural psychic things and ketu is a planet which is also in my opinion because of computing and its association with the um, machine learning artificial intelligence and we are talking about i think elon musk he is working on something which is about artificial intelligence for the brain when ketu is going to come into um vishaka nakshatra there is going to be some breakthrough innovation that can happen because vishaka as we know that it is the fork or it is the v which is forming the right hemisphere and the of the brain and the left hemisphere of the brain it's the synchronization point because till vishaka we have all the dev nakshatras and from anuradha we start the pitrayana nakshatras so ketu is going to move from a pitrayana nakshatra the last point of you know uh, the first position of pitrayana moving into devayana nakshatra so i think there is going to be some breakthrough innovations that might come in something to do with the uh, brain power and training the brain with artificial intelligence and robotics these are my observations i think you can add your own analysis what you think about this whole transit that is going to happen yeah uh, so th- those are very interesting points with regard to the Uh, the archway so archway can also be linked with the immigration kind of thing also so i'm sure there might Absolutely. be some 
immigration kind of uh, teams that could play out uh, during that time period. A uh, lot of immigration can be an actual law thing. Uh, the law around immigration, all that, having a big, big transmission. And the, I think that the, what you shared about the brain is very great, great point. So I'm sure, uh, you know, um, there will be some new innovation coming on that front. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've done, um, you know, a video also um, on looking at the right hemisphere of the brain, which is more like the Indra type and uh, the left hemisphere of the brain, which is more like the Agni type. So Agni is more sequential, logical, language, uh, planning, but the right hemisphere of the brain, which is Indra is more, you know, which wants to do anything um, not, you know, it's very irrational or rather it doesn't look at, it looks at a greater picture than in parts. Agni is more who likes to divide and conquer, which means looking at small parts, but Indra is the one who's a big picture guy, very lateral thinker. Agni is very sequential thinker, logical thinker. He thinks in terms of numbers and he thinks in terms of languages. That's the left hemisphere of the brain. The creative side, visualizing side is like big thinker, visionaries are all the right brain activity. So Vishaka are the people who want to bring the best of both worlds, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. That's their great advantage that they have. So Ketu moving there, Ketu, as we say, is uh, amongst, all the, uh, in, amongst all the grahas, he is said to be the head of the grahas. You know, Falasha Pushpa Shankasham, Taraka Graha Mastakam, Raudham Raudhrat Makam Ghoram, Tam Ketum Pranamamiham. Which means amongst all the stars and amongst all the grahas, he is Graha Mastakam, which means he is the head of them. So he is ahead in the line. He's the first one. That's why he is al always holding the flag. And he always is on the side of the victorious. Ketu is always on the side of the victorious because he's holding the victory flag. Right. So it's really, it'd be interesting because uh, um, Vishaka, as you mentioned with Indragni and so forth, so many times now, People feel stuck in their professions. Now, finally, they'll begin to look at alternative kind of things. So they Absolutely. might go to different kind of um, income streams or they might begin their really? own business kind of thing right now. Things yep. like that. So that could actually happen uh, with the Indragni uh, portion for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm Also, what ahead. you'll see, Sandeep, is a lot of attrition that will happen in the software industry. Why attrition? Because many people would have... Probably I have seen there's a new trend which I have been seeing globally that people are not keeping one job now because it's work from home. They're keeping two, two jobs. <laughs> Many companies are now finding out their employees are employed somewhere else also. Interesting. So this is a new phenomenon, which is, and people don't want to come back to work because then they can't split their time and work on two different projects with two different companies. So it's going to be, you know, that sort of a world that, People would be more, I think, into freelancing. People want to do cryptos. People want to do many things which are easy money. So this is where the focus is going to move. Anyway, I think I've taken a lot of your time. Uh, so I might have to step out and so you can carry on with, sure. you know, your discussion. Yeah. So yeah, no, no, thank you, Dr. Pai. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you for uh, sh sharing a lot of insights and your wisdom uh, and all that. So I think, uh, I think it'll be uh, very interesting to see what happens. So I think uh, we'll, we'll probably, uh, you know, the most, uh, I think we have talked a long time already. No, that's so interesting think, because again, yeah. Ketu moving in seventh house, it's a sign of balance and also where the planet Saturn is getting exalted. So especially yeah. you will see those effects, whatever we discuss when the Ketu is transiting a 20 degree of, uh, of, of Libra. Yeah. So uh, maybe so, that's the time. It will be very that. high. When Saturn is being in trine, when Ketu yeah. is going to move into the region where Saturn gets exalted, which we said around 20 degrees mm, of Libra, Libra. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people are going to maybe change or, you know, even some people, I have seen a lot of clients who are coming to me looking to change their course of 
uh, work, uh, career, profession completely. Mm. Yeah, because seventh house again, tenth from tenth. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is going to be people who would say, suddenly somebody who's a lawyer will say, okay, I, I want to be a tarot card reader. Huh? Where is <laughs> law and where is tarot card reading? You know, yeah. or somebody who is. Uh, who is uh, you know um, a doctor might say look I want to do cryptos full time I would do more money with cryptos so you would see some bizarre decision making that might happen when Ketu is going to go, th- uh, go through talking Just about Ketu crypto which is routine yeah. crypto and all you see last year the market is really down and crypto is down so I would like to see what happens with these transits for that that particular industry or something like for, for that Better, better. Everything is right now down, you know, all, all crypto as well as all the businesses and all because of this COVID and all. It would be nice to see the business coming up on, would like to know how, how, how it plays when it happens. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I want to uh, just, just quickly say on, um, on Ketu and Vishak also, as you mentioned, the split is also there, but we also have to be careful that split is also are we splitting also at the same time? So it could be like, as you mentioned briefly, like partnerships could go through challenging time right now also. So like two heads, you are unable to find that thing and so forth. So, so I'm curious, Dr. Pai, what could be some simple remedies perhaps just for the Rahu and Ketu placement uh, for this transit? What would you suggest? So a lot of broken marriages. <laughs> That's what you're trying to prove, right? Yeah, let's not get, uh, you know, more fear mongering for people. Uh, yeah. I think no, broken marriage is not a fear, it's a pleasure, correct? <laughs> you're, 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 you're cutting all the ties, so that's always a good, I feel. <laughs> See, Except um, when you're going through it, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, go ahead, Dr. Pai. Vishaka uh, and Ketu moving through Anuradha and Vishaka. Vishaka, I definitely feel, is a nakshatra which is associated with uh, Kartikeya, which means Murugan or Skanda or Subramanya, whatever he might be called. So praying to him might be a great energy to tap into. That is one thing. Second thing, Vishaka is also associated as per some, saying that, you know, I know that the birth star of Ayappa Swami is uh, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra. Okay, you see Uttara Falguni Nakshatra generally is connected to a lot of uh, uh, celibates also. You can see, not that they want celibacy, but they have taken their own thing. Now, when he comes into Vishaka, you would see the same Manikantan, what we call as Ayappa Swami. He becomes Ayappa, which means if you see, he is sitting, squatting, yogic position. It's a very rare position. You would see deities like Narasimha who is sitting in that position. And then you have seen Ayyappa Swami. Usually it's a very difficult yogic position that many yogis say you can't even sit like that where you have to tie your thing and you have to squat and sit and that is a very difficult position and that is very intense. So Vishaka is that intensity you are able to go through. So people worshipping these two deities who are very masculine and uh, they are connecting also to, you know, as Aditya was saying, severing the ties because they always hold a spear or a sharp object in their hand that can you know cut through the cords, the corporal cords. So the, I think there would be a lot of things that you need to go into this transformation for them. Now for the Rahu thing, what is happening is both Vishaka and Kritika, when Rahu and Ketu are going, these two nakshatras are said to be very ideal for doing um, fire rituals. Even like a small Agni Hotra or lighting a lamp every day. On Saturdays, do light any bitter oil lamps like mustard oil, sesame oil, because they absorb. And on Thursdays, you can always light um, a ghee lamp. These two things that I would definitely uh, uh, would say, because these two nakshatras can be controlled. One, 
Rahu is more associated with the time period just after sunset. Ketu is more stronger just before sunset, sunrise. During the Brahma Muhurta, Jupiter and Ketu are very strong. During after sunset, Saturn and Rahu would be very strong. So lighting a lamp early in the morning in Brahma Muhurta, which is a ghee lamp, and lighting a mustard oil or sesame oil uh, lamp would be more advisable during the night period to remove the negativities. At least do it on a Thursday and on a Saturday. So Thursdays is, you know, Guruvar. So a lot of gurus you can, uh, you know, appease by doing that. Saturday, of course, removing all the negativity, as we already talked, Saturn is going to go through Tamasik Nakshatras now, both we said whether it is Dhanishta or Satavishak, where it is going to go through. I think Satavishak it will be going next year, but at least this year, I think it will be largely in Dhanishta. And so worship of, as I said, even because Saturn is going through Dhanishta, we know Dhanishta is associated with Harihara. And Ayapa Swami or Mani Kantan, as it's called, because he has a small bell around his neck. That's why it's called Mani Kantan. So Manikanta, you can always worship because he is an offspring of Hari and Hara, which means Vishnu and Shiva. Vishnu in the form of Mohini Avatar and Shiva. So he's a union of that. So worshipping Ayapa Swami might be a very good way of trying to. He is called uh, also as Dharma Shastra. Yeah, he's okay. definitely connected to Vishaka because that's when, you know, when the, when the sun... I think when, when yeah, the sun when enters the, into Scorpio is when the the Ayapa season the begins. Ayapa season begins. And all, yeah, yeah. And also remember, he is called as Bhutnath. Bhutnath means all the spirits also can be controlled by him. There is, you see, in Ayapa temples, they whole Ayapa temples is usually lit with beautifully with just lamps. There is no. Electricity generally is not used in, um, there are six Ayapa temples that you have to visit before you go to Shabarimala. Those six temples are connected to the six chakras and the seventh chakra is your Ajna chakra. So Ayapa Swami temple in Shabarimala is associated with your Ajna chakra, the command center, which is your third eye. And the six other temples you have to go in a particular order. So starting with Muladhara chakra, Swadhisthana Chakra, Manipura Chakra. So each of them, there is a chakra and there is a temple associated with that. So basically the 40 day or 41 days uh, vrat that you keep before when you, you, you know, you go for Ayapa is nothing but a cleansing process for all the chakras. When you visit that temple specific to the chakra, you are actually going and cleansing, purifying, and re-energizing that chakra. So there is a complete divine process because it's just not about going to Shabri Mala, but you have to visit the other six temples also. So the final temple, Shabri Mala, where you have 13 steps, right? 13 18, steps. Correct. 18? 18, 18 steps. 18, yeah. 18. 18, yeah. Yes. 18 steps that you have to climb before you go. It is uh, you know, connected to all the dharmic principles related to your third eye because third eye is the union between Shiva and Parvati or it is the yin yang. Yeah. Okay, no, so no. I'll, I'll let you guys carry on. I have to drop off now sure, yeah. talking to you. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, thank now, you, Dr. Pai. Thanks, Aditya, thank you. Yeah. And thanks, Santip. Okay, namaste. Bye-bye. So yeah, so we uh, I think it'll be a good idea, uh, you know, uh, just to talk on the general transit actually today. I think we'll have a separate video in which we'll go in the complete uh, ascendance and so forth. Uh, you know, I think that'll be a good thing. Um, anything you would like to add, Aditya, on the uh, transits you would like to add, uh, like what were we discussed so far? Uh, 
I think this video is already long, right? One hour oh, already. So it's already one hour. Yeah, already we had completed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what good. happens. Uh, but but anyway, yeah. yeah. An interesting year overall, as we as we say. Uh, uh, nothing much to add. I always, as I said before. Any good uh, remedies you would like to add for Saturn and Danishta on top of what Doctor Pai added? Maybe, but when I think that what I'm going to do is when we talk about different. Uh, um, lagnas and all i think at that time we can i can i can point those okay great uh, great, great great so one thing i can definitely one thing i want to add just uh, and, and let this be the final thing today so like for the saturn and danishta uh, fire rituals i cannot say that enough if i got up i did was leading and said do it only on thursday then saturday i would say do it every day <laughs> you know because you have ketu okay, going through vishaka which is indragni rahus and kritika right now and saturn is a discipline planet actually so if you start lighting a diya exactly in the morning time and exactly the evening time it's a very powerful way to develop discipline you will see lot of uh, things improve in fact that is the easiest uh, solution for depression actually when you wake up early in the morning and you light a diya exactly during brahma muhurta or when you light it exactly around sunrise time so dr pai mentioned lighting it before sunrise now even if you are even if you light an exact diya exactly at sunrise moment and exactly at sunset moment becomes a very powerful uh, time uh to uh you know you see a very par- very powerful shift actually so in fact uh, uh, you know in most of the south india and all that there is a tradition of doing deepam actually you carry deepam and they would actually take it to all rooms actually you know they'll show the deepam in the evening time so that's a very powerful remedy i cannot say that enough especially when ketu is in vishaka especially when saturn is in uh saturn is there so try to make it a point that around evening time you're freshening up yourself and then you're lighting the the uh, exactly at uh, sunset point And when that time of sunset, what will be like? Whether it's six pm or nine pm, what will be the time? If you light a lamp at that point, you'll see it is actually helping you out with a lot of problems. A lot of things fall into place. Uh, the Vishaka problem, the split problem, is improved a lot. And uh, I can also say that uh, the discipline is further improved. Now, no matter what, light the deep, deepam or the uh, exactly in the morning also, like when sun is rising. Now that could be challenging for some people, but if you are able to do that. at least during brahma muhurta definitely write the ghee diya as dr pai mentioned if that you can buy that also you can buy that ready made thing easily if you can do that uh, that is a very powerful thing that's one thing i want to highlight again you know and of course uh, when we go for the other uh, transits and with the ascendants for various ascendants we'll go for we'll discuss other kind of thing but right now is a very powerful time especially to do this fire ritual kind of thing of course the the more uh, um, eager people can actually start doing homams themselves actually you can look into yeah you can do pvr yeah, like you know pvr nasimhara yeah. has got a nice uh, yeah pvr nasimhara is a great website vedikastrology.org website you can download his homa manuals you can buy, yeah. download homa kit you can even buy a agnyotra kit and do it every day that's something i can really encourage instructions are very easy if you are able to do the ganpati homa this is excellent time period in my opinion ketun vishaka is excellent time period to start a ritual around that that will open up very powerful things also It so is interesting was, because Doctor Pai was saying about Vishaka and 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 Krit Kartike and all because you see exactly opposite of Vishaka is Kritika Nakshatra. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, and it's like so balancing it's a, again opposites. You know, yeah, as, as it's opposite. Said. You can balance it out. Yeah, balance it out. Are you going to say something now, Ji? I was going to ask. Anyone can do these homas, right? Yes, anyone yeah. can do this homa. There's nothing. So usually they say the more intense homas like Rudra Homa should not be done by women who are menstruating or who don't even they are menstruating. otherwise you can do ganpati homa everyone you can do that easily usually they do say like okay pandit should do it of course that is true but you know he has simplified the process in the homa manual at least your simplest thing is that you light the diya and you meditate upon the diya now the homa thing the fire is more energized because you are chanting mantra you are offering ghee and all that and then you meditate upon that fire until it dies out it's a very powerful thing in fact i know uh, you know i think it was uh, there was this simple nakshatra homa which someone did in which they just lit 27 nakshatras around in a circle and they just waited until each of the each of the diyas would actually go down and that is a very powerful thing and you could see depending upon the person depending upon the karma that had to be cleansed you know so where your saturn was there that was taking long time that diya was not getting off for a long time you can do all kind of diya things actually but uh, homas you can do quite easily no, even you the pattern use... of fire no there are there are some if you carefully take pictures of yes. the pattern of fire of homa that's a whole different topic you can see the different patterns forming and that can give you some hints actually Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yes, one. So, uh, definitely. I mean, I have some 
picture but again i don't want to because it is someone else's so i don't want to show yeah. that but they are there are patterns which they have taken yeah. by so each, each they say that uh, patterns right so they say that the fire, the tongue of the agni is different carrying indicates a different kind of energy is actually that's what yeah. they say so there is a sulingini and all that you know so that kind of thing is like it shows this particular tongue agni is at this particular bhava so this particular energy is present in agni right now that particular thing there is 100% that's a very powerful thing yeah. so the, the, this is the best way now this is what i say is this is a homa is an actual way to burn your karma now you know i i will i will uh, though astrologers or any people will say you can't burn your karma karma is karma and all that but homa is an effective way to at least reduce the intensity of your karma for sure no matter how bad it is i've seen 100% if you start doing homa this is an excellent time to do that and especially when rao enters into aries i cannot recommend that in a pulse so that let that be the uh, final point today so like let that be the take also i mean we gave a lot it's already a one hour long also i think uh, when we get back we'll have another video we'll probably have a detailed uh, ascendant transit uh, video also with all these uh, point additional pointers in that video also thank you thank you so much aditya ji and thank you sandeep okay. yeah and we'll be back with the uh, each ascendant soon yeah sure, sure. thank you thanks sir yeah are we stopping